Ray, Kaya, congratulations on the series. I've uh, smashed my way through three episodes so far, three mm. and a bit, mm -hmm. and it is very binge-worthy. I know yeah. it's a bit of a dirty word now because we should really just take our time with things, but uh, I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, you guys are a really good pairing in this as well because I was thinking about it, and out of everyone in the cast, you may have more of a kind of a kindred spirit. You both kind of broke through very young. Uh, Kaya, obviously, in Skins. Mm. Ray, I discovered you watching... Both Robin of Sherwood, oh, which was yes. quality telly, yeah. and uh, and Scum, which I watched <coughs> really young, which I do not recommend to watch if you're as young as I was, but <laughs> both excellent in their own way. Uh, having kind of been in the business uh, a long time, that both of you have been involved in all sorts of different projects, do you think you have an eye on when something really works, when some magic is being made, when something's... I'd like to think so, but to be honest, I think taste changes so often now that it's hard. There'll be something that you think, well, oh, this is actually really good quality and really great and no one will ever see it. And you're like, oh, mm. it's a shame. But I try not to um, to think about it, to be honest. For me, the, the cool bit is being on set, is giving the performance and then it becomes something else. Somebody else's yeah, problem. Yeah, somebody else's yeah. problem. And, yeah. and I, I try not to to worry or overthink what it may what it may become afterwards because I've learned that you never know and that that's kind of great like let, it's let great. it be it's weird, the world it? it's, yeah. weird. it's weird because you know nine times out of ten you feel this feels really good but you know then it goes to the editing room yeah it's different yeah you know, and, and, and when when stuff's good you got you got to look at the edit and go yeah he's done his job and you know, we, you can only do your job and it's left to someone else to get on with in a way. Mm. Yeah. Do you think those like early starts you both had give you more of a kind of relaxed view of of the business in a way compared to someone who mm. kind of breaks through on a show like this and they put all their hopes and dreams and expectations on it? I wouldn't say relaxed, I'd say deep-rooted trauma. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but there, there is a freedom in, I, I was, I think what was really fortunate, and I'll speak for myself, is, yeah. is starting before social media. I'm really mm. glad that um, I learned how to be in a project and it not worry how many followers you have or or the marketing after like it was just about the project and about whether that could be good and and starting off in in England as well working on film sets here and you know you're never you're treated quite normally and I think that's a great thing I think it's like you're not made you're not made to think that you're going to be a star or anything gross like that because it's not about that our culture with it is a lot more kind of about the work um and that's something I'm really quite grateful for um it must be a huge pressure now to be on, yeah, your first show and it absolutely blow up and then overnight you're really, really famous and, yeah, I don't, oh, no, I wouldn't like that. <laughs> well, I won't be surprised. Well, it's just different the way it's, they go about it today. Yeah. It? Mm -hmm. I mean, from, you know, just doing this, this junket is totally different from what it would have been six, seven, eight years ago. Mm. You know, it's it's all to do with the media, mm -hmm. you know, and I know you, you have to sell a product, project and all that, but it's just the way it's... Instagram, Facebook mm. and, and all that. It's, yeah. it's in your face all the time, you know. Well, I don't think anyone involved in this has any worries about where it's going to go because it's, I think it's brilliant. I thought the, the film right. gentleman was the best thing Guy Ritchie had done for a few years. Right. Uh, and I was interested to see how this was going to kind of transfer onto TV and I think it's done it really, really well. Okay. Uh, with the pacing of it, it's really entertaining. It hits all those points you want. Uh, Ray, you've been involved into the kind of greatest gangster movies ever made already mm. in like Sexy Beast, The Departed to name just two, but there's, mm. there's, there's a bunch more. Uh, but Kai's doing a lot of the heavy lifting, the heavy gangstering in the <laughs> first few episodes in this. Uh, did you have to, did you draw any inspiration or take any advice from, from this man and how to be intimidated <laughs> on screen, how to pull off this world? Well, I mean, the, the, when I found out that Ray was playing my dad, it took it to another level in a really great way. It meant that I had to step up to the plate and Susie had to step up. Like she, it meant that, right, I knew that she had to be as powerful and, and as possible um, because I know that everything Ray touches turns to gold and that he was going to do an I incredible job. <laughs> I'm really kissing your bum today. No, I you are, I can't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> it's true. Um, and um, yeah, I, I definitely took inspiration from knowing that he was going to feel that part and that I could then step up to the plate and, and do as much as I could with her as possible. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, it's it's weird to think as a, as a film fan. You look at the kind of the movies that like redefine the genre and, and redefine really like British cinema for a while. That that guy did uh, with Matthew Vaughan, uh, like Lock, Stock and Snatch. Yeah. And it seems mad that you're you weren't involved in those uh, those movies. Or I, I, ne I nearly cinema. was in Lock, Stock. I nearly was, but I it did didn't, wonder how. Late yeah, no, I was going to do it, and then the dates moved. Right. When they were doing it, and uh, I went off, got another job. And then when, by the time they were coming to make it, um, it I was doing the other job, so it's gone. 
And over the years, we just it just hasn't happened, you know. And it's lovely now, you know, when you get a little bit older and and you look at something, and it's it's a different kind of genre, really. Even though it's a gangster movie, but you know, right away you read it, and there's a guy sitting in a a nick somewhere having a barbecue with his mates, and you go, oh, for well, fuck's sake, that's got nothing to do with, you know, anything <laughs> that I've ever done before. But you've got to open your mind to that, you know, and you've got to say, okay, that's what we're doing. That's what we're making. We're making something a little bit over there, mm. you know. It's actually good because you get rid of all the other shit, mm. you know, and you just get on with doing what you're making. But you have to believe it. That is actually uh, separate to what I was going to say. The... Uh, yeah. Because he's such a distinctive director and he has very distinctive films and he has very distinctive mm. characters, mm. I wondered uh, as as actors whether you have to really jettison and avoid any of that previous work not to hit any of those notes. No, I try to avoid it. I think it's important. You know, it's like when you do a movie that's adapted from a novel or something, of course the source material is extremely important, but the thing you're creating is separate to that. And, mm. and our world is separate to the movie. It's within the same universe with the kind of... The, the style and the heightenedness of it, but it's its own thing. And I thought it was quite important to have that separation. Um, but I think with Guy's style, the second you read the dialogue, it's there. You can't help but fall into the rhythm of speaking in the way that we're kind of all used to as actors speaking in his films, because it, it's how it's written. It's a lack of punctuation, which at first you're like, hang on a minute, this is everything my English to teacher told me was wrong. Um, but then you kind of lean into it and it allows you to to go big and to have a freedom within the world because it is a heightened environment um, that you wouldn't have on another project. And and that, for, I think, for me personally as an actor, that was really quite exciting. Yeah, I've kind of been doing that for years, just taking the the uh, commas and the full stops yeah. out of us when you get a scene because that actually makes you in a ribbon. You yeah, actually start you talking like yeah. you should talk. But if you take all that out, and just rab it and you just take a breather when mm. you want and, you know, you just go, well, you do naturally. Finally, I just wondered, uh, I was listening to Michael Caine's autobiography recently mm. and he talked about how much interest he got from the actual gangster underworld after doing Get Carter <laughs> and he'd be accosted <laughs> by, like, real-life gangsters going, ah, what you got wrong in that is... is that, uh, <laughs> uh, I wondered, that must, is that something you've had in your career or something you've thought about where in the future now you might be sat at a bar at a pub and someone's going to be like... Well, let me tell you uh, what's... I grew up with them, babe. I, I, really? I've, I've got everything right. I already know that world. <laughs> Same. <laughs>